Hokey dokey. Shout out to Nick for sending me this example to work out for you all. This is a 1.2.3b example from quiz two. Let's jump into it. We are given an equation and the goal is to identify which of these graphs corresponds to this equation. So there's a couple different ways of going about it. The most efficient way, in my opinion, is to find the p-intercept and the q-intercept. So if you notice on the graphs, the p uh, axis is like the y axis. And so finding the p intercept is like finding your y intercept. And same with the q axis. So q axis is like our x axis. So finding the q intercept is like finding the x intercept. So if we can find these two intercepts, we can find our correct graph. p intercept, we will plug 0 in for q in this equation. So what that looks like is 3p minus 2 equals 6 times 0, because we're plugging 0 in for q. 0 times 6 is 0, and we're solving for p. So we add 2, and we divide by 3. Whoops. We get uh, p equals 2 thirds. So again, this is our p intercept. So we should look for the correct green line that's intersecting uh, the p-axis through two-thirds, or the y-axis through two-thirds. And if we wanted to, we can find the uh, q-intercept. In some cases, you might be done once you find the uh, p-intercept, because there might only be one graph that has that correct p-intercept. Uh, in this case, I think there are two. And so if we wanted to, for example, we could eliminate, say, option C, because its p-intercept is negative. It's crossing through a negative p value or negative y value on the p axis. And then really same with d. So we're left with a and b. Let's go ahead and find the q intercept by plugging in p equals zero. So as you might have noticed, we're plugging in zero for the other variable whenever we're trying to find a certain intercept. So for q intercept, we plug in p equals zero. All right, let's get started. So we're plugging in zero for p. You get the idea. Uh, 3 times 0 is 0. So we have 0 minus 2, which is just minus 2 or negative 2. And then to get q by itself, let's divide by 6. So we find that q is equal to negative 2 sixths or negative 1 third. And so again, this is our q-intercept. So we're looking for the graph that has a p-intercept or a y-intercept of 2 thirds and then a q-intercept, or a, an x-intercept, of negative one-third. So, looking at these remaining options, I think the biggest thing that uh, distinguish these two, uh, I mean, besides their scales, <clears throat> excuse me, was the... Oh, you know what? The scale is actually pretty important here. Okay, yeah. So, when we look at this, what helped me the most, I think, is looking for the q equals negative one-third. Because when we look here, negative one-third is approximately here. But this green line doesn't cross until maybe negative two-thirds. It's kind of close, but it's not quite what this one is here. And so I'm thinking B is our best answer. So we have the negative one-third on the Q-axis. And then for the P-axis, two-thirds. So we're looking for this to be just below one, so one is right here, and two thirds is just below it on the y axis or the p axis. So I hope this makes some sense. We're finding p intercepts by plugging in q equals zero. We find q intercepts by plugging in p equals zero, and then we find the graph that has those intercepts. All right.